<laughs> oh, happy November, everybody. Oh, my goodness. I'm Patty. I'm Carrie. And we are Studio R12, and we come every week here to um, YouTube and to Facebook, and we do um, DIY, and we're going to talk to you about DIY today and show you some really kind of cool techniques and some mistakes to avoid when you're stenciling your signs and your projects and stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Super excited. If you are not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, we highly recommend that. We have some so really stuff. fun things that we release. Um, we typically release tutorials every Saturday. We go live every Tuesday and we've been jumping into short little snippet tutorials for mm -hmm. you that are less than a minute so you can get some quick content between our videos. Yeah. And last week on our YouTube channel, we released how to paint over pre-painted metal and super important if you want to paint your kitchen knobs mm -hmm. um i don't know if you've priced kitchen knobs but we um renovated a little house um last year and we wanted a whole different look and it was the old 1970s yep. brown with the gold cruddy looking busy things and those knobs were expensive yeah. and we weren't going to replace the cabinets so we painted the cabinets and then we can paint the knobs. Yep. And so if you don't know how to prep them, you're not going to have your, you're going to be peeling paint off into your food yes. if you're doing your kitchen cabinets. But um, so it's super important to know how to prep. And then you can do it super on the down low cheap. And then mm -hmm. you can spend that money on other things. Whatever things. Whatever yeah. things. Whatever things. Like on studior12.com where we have more than 6,000 titles of stencils. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue. We did not I, practice I that. I know. That was good. <laughs> Which stencil would you buy? If yes. You saved all that money on painting knobs. <laughs> so this week on our YouTube channel, we are releasing, if you want to grab this yep. baby, um, our buffalo plaid box. So Patty is going to show you how she assembled this quick box mm -hmm. with some some pine. We have yep. pine boards, pine boards, and uh, dimensional lumber. Dimensional That's the lumber. stuff that is on the shelf at all the big box stores. Mm -hmm. yep. And then she's going to show you painting your buffalo plaid all the way mm -hmm. around it, and she's going to show you some different ways that you can decorate yep. the front of it. And we have a cool sale going on with that too. Cool. We will. We will yep. on Saturday. Next, yeah, on Saturday. And then what's neat about doing these guys, I'm going to come down here for a hot second, is, you know, they're just mason jars with a little bit of greenery plugged in. And if I could get that out, I would. And now you could put in fall leaves. You can put in Christmas. Mm -hmm. You can put in whatever. You can take them away, put in your paper plates and your cups and silverware. Like, they're very, very nice little easy box to use everywhere in your house. Mm -hmm. Back of the commode. Um, that kind of thing. You can use it for all kinds of storage. It is the perfect size. We worked on this for a really long time and yes. we will give you the dimensions um, coming soon. Yes. Um, and then I have also posted on our <clears throat> Facebook page a little while ago today. So today is November 1st. Happy November. Happy November. But you guys, I want to know what your weather is doing because yeah. I am dressed in short sleeves and a shorts because it is 70 degrees outside and we have had the most beautiful Indian summer yes. and we feel so blessed not to race right into right. winter. Except for my husband who's ready to go hunt. Yeah, 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 yeah. The hunters <laughs> are like, not happy no. right now. Yeah. Um, but I have announced on our Facebook page earlier today a fun sale that we're having. You can do buy two, get one free on the entire website nice. on November 1st. So the coupon code is in the post and i also made a new collection of thanksgiving themed stencils oh, yeah. so we have a whole bunch of stencils that are like gobble 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 and gobble till you wobble great be, yeah. good, be <laughs> thankful and all of that so well um, and you know coming after the last two years this is 2022 and um, coming after the last two years of challenges like this is going to be a special year for people, I think, like to be grateful and thankful that your family is coming over sure. and doing all of that. So um, just treasure all your memories. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Um, so today's lesson came from a stencil fan question Yay. of can you drop shadow something on your stencil that is not words? Mm -hmm. And so the answer is yes, absolutely. Yes. And today we're going to show you how. Okay, and I am going to step up over here. Um, I have a confession, okay? So I walked into our prep in doing the things to get ready for today, and I was like, now wait a minute. 
Will that make a mess of my background? Because I don't do this very often. I do lettering all the time. And I was confused. Like in it, like, I mean, 7,000 stencil titles. I was confused. So it's a very valid question. And I love that you guys send us very valid questions because your question could be my question. Mm -hmm. And then it could be something Carrie was like, no, absolutely, it's going to be fine. And I was like, okay, you're right. I know this. I know this, you know? And it was just like, poo, you know, like just thinking about it. And then we tried to make this be something that we can show you how to drop shadow in a couple of different ways. So I'm going to show you an element like a bunny or like a Christmas tree. And then we're going to explain some of the things that you can go wrong with yeah. and that kind of stuff. So here we go. You're ready. Okay. So First thing I want to talk about, because this is a kind of a funny um, thing, the rounds have been so popular this year, right? Oh my gosh. So you might, I know, right? Like you can just like zoom, zoom, zoom rounds well, all the time. As we as we talk about that, look at the back wall. We were working on changing our decoration from Halloween to Thanksgiving today. And everything that I was ground, gra grabbing was round, round, round. I was like, oh, we need to paint a square. <laughs> So we have a round stencil and we have a square surface. One thing, watch what happens here. If I've got this here, right? And I tilt that, my letters are gonna go on crooked. And sometimes it might just be a little bit, but you might not notice it because that bunny does look a little bit straight. Um, but it can make a big difference and you might make yourself nuts if you have leaning Happy Easter on your sign. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take out your trusty dusty T-square and you're going to use the straight edge of your square and you're going to lay it down under your word and make sure you're not even gonna mark it. You're gonna use your little pieces of tape and you're gonna jiggy joggy that thing into position. Tape it down in two spots, always two spots and then you're gonna know that your lettering is straight and you're not gonna make mistakes. T-square is 100% your, like your, your friend. You can just be like, hey friend, thanks for having my back because this is important. <laughs> and we have them in two different sizes. We have yeah. a 12 inch and an 18 inch and determining which size you get is really going to be determined by what size of project you're going to be painting. Yeah, like if I'm doing this, either would work. If I'm doing something super long, I'm gonna want my big one. Just depends on you. Um, everybody has a shape of their heart, a size mm -hmm. of their heart. They're gonna want the size that fits the projects they do. Some people work really good tiny. You wouldn't use a big T-square for that, but I'm a larger person, which <laughs> give me some hearts for saying that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to pause there and let that sink in for a hot second. Okay. Now let's talk about how you drop shadow. So when you drop shadow, what you do is you have something painted. Now this is really important because the way that we do it when we teach our workshops in our shop here in town and the way we teach it online has been that you always give yourself a little edge. Like you take your brush, a little bit of paint, and you might scumble the edges of your paint or you might do the whole thing, okay? And then you take your tape. I love to have just a little bit of tape just kind of cornered down so I can just lift it and use it as my positioning pieces. Okay, so then you would move it down and over and I'll show you that in a hot second. But if you have, let's line that back up. If you have something on your board that's not gonna be drop shadowed, i.e. this um, greenery going around the bunny, then what is neat about that is then you can use that as your moving locator. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to do three coats of paint. Right. You are just going to be doing two coats or, yeah, well, it's going to be two full coats, but you're going to do two coats instead of three coats. And anytime I can get rid of a whole coat of paint, I am a happy camper. I like to paint, but I like to finish. Um, yeah. I like to get to the end of my project. Yeah, yeah. I, and I'm I'm such an efficient. Like, how can we do this mm -hmm. quickest and easiest? Yeah, and I think agreed. that's where the stencils come came into your life in the first place. Yes. Was oh my gosh! If you've ever base coated bats and snowflakes, I'm looking at some of the samples around here. If you've ever, and I'm making the angry face for a reason because like um, you have to have such precise detail going mm -hmm. around that and and the time the time that it takes to do something. And even honestly, when you get into vinyl versus stenciling, um, the weeding yeah. is as bad as base coating mm -hmm. like bats. You know, I like that drives me nuts. So 
I am not a fan of those things. Agreed. Okay, so we have an Easter palette. One of the things that we're going to be doing right now, it is the season, um, but we have pre-recorded um, a lot of content. If you go to our YouTube channel, you're going to see all the beautiful mm -hmm. fall stories. You're going to see everything you'd need for fall and Christmas. And we are trying to get you ready for your following season early enough so that you can get the things. We supply chain the heck out of the world in the last 12 months. Um, we've had all kinds of challenges. So we want to provide you guys with solutions for the next season that you're going into. And we're going to be looking at a whole bunch of projects that use the dimensional lumber mm -hmm. as well so that you can have it in your garage, in the wood pile that your husband has stored for 50 years. Ask mm -hmm. me how I know this. Um, you know, you can go and find pieces that you can make things out of and truly just go DIY. So this is like, just like, let's not be done with our resources. Yeah. You know, I like the idea of using things up. Okay. Sorry. Diet tribe over. So the way that you do a drop shadow is you're going to take your little positioning tapes and I'm going to drop it down evenly. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at this side, I'm looking at this side, and if I'm over here looking, this side is way bigger. This side is bigger than this side. So I'm going to take this tape and just slide him down just a little bit. And now I know that this bunny, when I do his um, undercoat for the drop shadow, because the bunny is gonna be white. And the bunny is going to be on this light blue. Well, so we've talked about our contrast, right? If I get my white next to the blue, and this is not on something that you can see it closely. Okay, so if I'm here, and if you go ahead and squint with me online, if you go ahead and squint, the white disappears next to that blue. And so um, that is why you use drop shadow um, because you want to make sure that you can make your, mm -hmm. um, your subject pop off of its background. So I want this to be pastel, but my blue and white are not going to go together. And then if I have my bunny painted on this light blue, my bunny's going to disappear. Right. And so it'll look like an empty circle. Okay. Now, before we move mm -hmm. too much further, because I know we've had this question before, mm -hmm. You don't always have to drop shadow no. to the same place. I yeah. think we all have our favorites. I, I like to go down yeah. and to the right, yeah. and Patty goes down and to the left. Yes. You yes. can also go up to the left or up to the right. So that's really going to be determined on your personal preference. And do the preference. hokey pokey and, and turn, turn yourself, yourself around. around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's super true, um, and that is important. And actually, mm, I'm going to try to let me keep this in a rhythm here because if I go there, I'm not going to come back, and it's going to be bad. So um, then what we're going to do is we're going to take our paint. We're on our um, Use It Over and Over palette, which is um, Mylar. Um, we had a supply chain issue and couldn't get palette paper. And I don't like paper plates for the most part. And this is something that you can get on our website. And it comes in a big, long strip. And you can use it for all kinds of things. And we have a video for that as well. YouTube is going to be your best friend if you want to know mm -hmm. all the tricks and secrets of... What is that? Steve, you say something? Okay, um, but YouTube is going to be your best friend, so make sure that you do subscribe. And if you want to get the updates for when we post new things, then you'll ring that bell icon. Okay, so I want this to have a gray drop shadow, um, kind of leaning towards my blue. So I've got a blue grayish color out here. If I don't want it to be this kind of dark gray, can you see that okay, Steve? Yeah. Okay, if I don't want it to be this dark gray, I could do two things, and this is important the mixing of your paints is an important thing. Um, if you mix with your brush, one thing that can happen is you'll get a glom of paint in your brush and then it might bleed under. So that's important. So we use a little offset palette knife. So see, this way your knuckles don't run through the paint um, because your knuckles are protected by the offset palette knife. So if I know that I don't want this to be this dark of gray, I could do two things. I could do white and mix that in there and I think I might have just mixed that color um, and you'll mix it until it's actually blended or I could take another color and I could mix that other color like a gray in there and actually three things um, so sometimes 
you get into mixing your colors and you want to maybe make the green part of the family member of the color and the green is light so I could go with my gray pick up just a little bit of my green and now my gray will be in that green family and so it still reads gray so you can see this um, it it reads a gray it is gray and then this is a lighter gray so it's interesting that you can use a couple of different ways to lighten your dark color and I feel like those are good tools to have okay so now we want to pick one and I'm going to go ahead and use this green color because it's reading a neat pretty color and then I'm going to put this I always drop shadow to the left and lower that's my preference so while you're doing this we mm -hmm. had a question that I kind of held off on how do you determine what color you drop shadow? And the question was, do you always choose black and white? So I knew that this was coming, so yeah. I kind of held off on it. Yeah, no, you can. Um, and actually on the next thing that we're gonna talk about right here, um, I do a completely, totally different thing. Um, I need to do this drop shadow. Actually, this is gonna not be drop shadowed. So now we'll reposition this. Because we're using our dome brushes and because um, we are use we're offloading, so I don't know if you caught that, but we take our paint, we pick it up and we offload like 10 times, five to 10 times. And depending on how good a scooper you are, if you're a good scooper, then 15 times, okay? You want it to be scant paint. <clears throat> and then you just swirl, but because I just swirled, paint's dry already. So um, it dries so fast and it doesn't bleed under. So I'll go here. And now it just seems so weird to do this when you're like, wait, I want this to be perfect. So now you gotta line everybody up. This is not one of my perfect skills. For whatever reason, I always- I think it's, I, I struggle with it too. And that's one of the reasons that I kind of find myself not drop shadowing mm. as much, especially on really busy stencils. Yeah. It's because I'm just afraid, I, I, you have that fear. That, that you don't get it quite mm -hmm. lined up right. <clears throat> okay, so you can see around my bunny that my bunny is bunny. evenly, what Your bunny you is funny. My, I have a funny bunny. We read that PJ funny bunny <laughs> to my son, Joe, about 859,000 times when he was a kid. Okay, I'm going to pick up with a new dry brush. Never use wet brushes. The dome brush, oh, by the way, the dome brushes are in stock. Yes. Fat and happy and in stock. Um, so now is the time. If you need them, get them. They're there. Okay, so now I'm going to stipple, and actually we wanted to talk about... Jumbo daubers. Okay, mm -hmm. so watch what happens when I go here. I'm going to make a whole bunch of pokey dots, right? We'll call them hokey pokey dots. Um, and I'm gonna have to move really quick to get that evenly coated, and then I'm gonna have a whole bunch of like texture with bunny fur, that might not be bad. Jumbo daubers are amazing. You use them dry, offload once or twice, and then they cover a big old area and they make it nice and even. So they're your buddy when you are doing a big area open piece like um, the bunny or the truck or any of those things. They're really good about not bleeding under. Look how fast I did yeah. the first coat of that. That is amazing. So um, jumbo daubers for the win. Yes. And then I'm gonna jump that in there. And then we're going to go ahead and do our lettering in that greenish grayish. I'm gonna mix in with that other gray. Um, did you see what I just did? Did you catch that? I went right in with my dry brush, straight into flat kind of not very much paint, kind of chunked out a little bit, but I spent the time I need to over here on my paper towel. So make sure you're using that paper towel wisely. Okay, so now we'll just make that Happy Easter into, when you're doing big long areas like that, we leave them open because a lot of bridges look kind of ugly. So I will anchor with my fingers and then I will go this way. Let's go here so Dustin can see. I will go across the line. If you go across this way, the paint tends to collect underneath long skinny lines. So if you have a big long pattern line or any of that kind of stuff, your paint can collect in there. Okay, so we'll pick up some more paint. Offload again, always offloading. 
And then notice I'm swirling. We haven't, we haven't talked as much about swirling as we did um, like a year ago because it's so, like we feel like we've covered it, but swirling is something that you don't always know how to do. And what you do is you just pick up your paint and now I'm going to fold this over so I use all of my paper towel. Like it seems wasteful to offload, but what you're doing is you're creating a perfect loaded environment. Okay, so um, anyway, so when you are swirling, you are not leaving so much paint behind and the swirling motion just covers the distance really fast. Okay, now I can redo it again because I'm already dry. And if you are not on our Studio R12 newsletter, if you go to studior12.com, you will get a pop-up of a big spinny wheel and you can enter your email address and the wheel will spin and there is a potential that you will get a discount by entering your email to get I on our- it's like bigger than a potential. I think it's like <laughs> 90, I think there's like maybe one little sliver that might not have one, but I think- I think they the have rest. to do that just to have it be like a gamble yes. kind of, you just, some discounts are better than others Agreed. too. Yeah. There are several different ones, but we send out newsletters six days a week and they have tips and videos. They'll remind you of the videos that are coming out. They'll remind you of their lives. They will remind you of our sales. Um, they'll let you know when we have new blog posts and different information. So they are really jam packed with information. So for today's newsletter, we showed a sample of how you could mm -hmm. paint a deer sign with and without the drop shadow. And when Patty and I were looking at it, the drop shadow deer, it completely changed the sign. Yeah, it totally did. It was the deer without the drop shadow, as we talked about, it's faded. Floating. Yeah, it yeah. was just kind of there. <clears throat> just doing a thing. Okay, let's have a reveal. And you ready for this, Dustin? You're good? Okay, so we're just gonna peel up right here. And what do we have? So look at how that bunny sits on that little plate mm -hmm. right there. Um, it is just a really good thing. And now I honestly am looking at this area right here and I'm like, hmm, maybe I'd wanna have a drop shadow there. So what you can do is you can totally go and do your drop shadow and you can do the next step and then redo your yep. base color however you want to do it the neat thing about stencils is they are repositionable you can use them over and over and over again and we have a how to wash your stencils mm -hmm. video that you can watch and how to wash your brushes as well so you know how to keep things clean okay so that is that one and let's go here so i went down to our shop and i saw this and it was super interesting to me um, I loved the color, I loved the fade. I really like this white spatter. One of the things that we get asked a whole lot of times is how do you get your inspiration? So if you're in a big box store, big craft store that happens to have a million signs laying around everywhere, take a picture. If you love the colors, yeah. um, Carrie and I were talking, there was a painting she saw at TJ Maxx that had a subject matter that she didn't know if she would like in her house. Mm -hmm but the colors were brilliant and the white space was brilliant. So you take a picture of that and then you find what you would want instead and you use that as your inspiration. So um, I just really liked the green and the dark around the edges. And then if you look here, this, this is the most unusual. I would never have thought to do this. I did not paint the sun. Um, Abby painted the sun, good job, Abby. Um, but um, they did every other letter in the opposite drop shadow. So that's even a different way. And I think it's just a brilliant sign. I love the sign. Um, so that's another way that you can do your drop shadow. And then we'll go here. And so I recreated the fade. And by the way, so if you're ready for next Tuesday at noon, um, then I'm going to show you how to do this fade technique in like 20 seconds. Um, so I want, let me preface this. Okay. So Patty and I were both painting backgrounds, prepping the, boards. prepping the boards for today. And she went ahead and got started and we have two sets of paint. So I went out to our other set of paint to decide what color. So then I come back in with four different colors Pastels, for us to choose from. Easter, yeah. And she's already putting her stuff away. It's like, time out. <laughs> yeah. How did you do that so fast? 
So we're going to show you next yeah. week. Next week, we're going to show you how <laughs> you can get that fade. And what I love about this is a fade can be a very difficult thing to do. And the way that I did it, it took all the difficulty away. Yes. So next week, fade time, we're going to do a little, it's going to be awesome. Okay. So I did some different things here and I want to show you a mistake that I made. And what would I do if I made this mistake? I'll tell you how to fix it right away is I would redo my background. I would give that a light sand and I would just go back and start over. I literally have like 10 minutes in this right now, you know, maybe 10. Um, and that's with the layers and all the things to do, including picking my paint. So with stenciling, because you can reuse your stencils, if you do make a mistake, you can just stop, sand, start over, mm -hmm. flip it over, paint the back. Like there's things you can do, so don't be afraid of making mistakes. And if you're practicing a hard thing, something that you're afraid of, get one of those boxes that's showing up on your front porch <laughs> all the time and just tear off a piece and practice it on that and then go to your board and you can do it there. Okay, so um, I chose with this to do a light color and I really actually do not like this whatsoever. Um, I went too light, but it does really make those letters pop off of the background. And I wanted to show painting the tree, but then when I did, okay, ready? All the confessions are coming out today. <laughs> You guys, you don't, you are not the only one that makes a mistake. I know what I'm doing, but then I still make mistakes. I've been at this 30 years, but I still don't know everything or I don't have the muscle memory of the knowledge. So I did the light fade and then I ghosted my letters and I ghosted the own and I ghosted the farm and I was like, ah, okay, I'll just do a drop shadow on that because the black might not show up so well. So I left it at the same thickness of mm -hmm. the other, and then it made it blurry. So if you look at that, those letters are super difficult to read because yeah. the drop shadow is too far, it's too, too big. So you can do a big drop shadow on big letters, but then you can do a separate little drop shadow on your little letters, and it's gonna look way better. So. In this project, I can do three different drop shadow lengths. Mm -hmm. it, there's no art to this that says you have to have one drop shadow for all the people. Okay, so you can you can have you can yes. have your well, own. and you wouldn't even necessarily have to drop shadow all of it. No, the you big would not. letters you could leave tree farm in your really light color, mm -hmm. and then drop shadow the little letters yep. to yep. make them pop, and then yeah. good to there's, go. There's no rules, and then like. Um, and peel this guy off of here. We attached this with um, little command strips so we can change out for the seasons. Spoilers. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Okay, so whatever. You still have to watch on Saturday. You still have to watch Saturday. <laughs> Please. How did we do that? Okay, drop, okay, no. Uh, command strips. But um, if I wanted to make this fit in my house and I had uh, maybe a little bit of, you know, teal accents or something like that, I could do a drop shadow of just teal if I wanted to love simply and I wanted it to be a Valentine sentiment, then I could drop shadow white and do my red lettering. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a million ways that you can do the drop shadows. So don't be thinking black and white. Be thinking anything that you sure. need to pull your project together. Well, and Jarita asked a really good question. Some fonts do not look good with drop shadow. Uh, do you recommend using it mainly on block lettering? I don't think so. Um, I've seen it on... The one thing with us having the retail store um, in our town, um, we do sign painting workshops. So if you're ever in Gallup Police, Ohio, that is how you will come and mm -hmm. see what we're up to. Um, our big ballroom that we have has, I think, 150 mm -hmm. or 200 painted signs in there. It's Julie. magic. Yeah, it's a lot. So many. But you will see a million examples of all the fonts. And some do not look good, but that doesn't mean you should not choose like any cursive or anything like that. So yeah, you can do all of them mostly. Um, and then the distance might make a difference. Agreed. And then it, if you do it up and over versus down and over, that might make a difference as well. You could also, um, this bunny makes me feel like that is a true statement. Um, it's got a little hair sticking on him. If you get any hairs, by the way, from the brushes, um, they are, I watched a whole video and I can't find it right now. So I, I wanna share it, but I can't find it. Um, when they manufacture these, they take, you know, this glom of bristles 
and they dip them in a glue and they let that dry and harden. But inside of these, there's still going to be hairs that will fall out because not everybody got glued consistency consistently. If you are doing that and a hair falls out, wait till it's dry. Don't pick it out while it's wet and then brush it off. And if you need to, just a little light sanding will take it down. Um, this is the 220 sanding block um, or sandpaper on the sanding block. If you need to sand, just a light little shimmer shimmer over the top will take that away and then you won't have any any problems with that. But Wait one second. Yes. While we're talking about sanding, mm -hmm. can we talk about sanding when you drop shadow? Because if you're drop shadowing and you sand through it, mm -hmm. it's going to potentially pull away that top layer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I don't have hard rules. I'm going to play the game based on what I'm painting. Okay, so like if I was sanding, I'm not sure I'm understanding the question completely. So if you are going to sand through that mm -hmm. and you have painted your gray yeah and so you, I'm, and you use a, a hard sandpaper on yeah, your white, yeah, yeah. it's going to pull that away. White's going to pull away. So let's do that. Um, so one thing to note when you are sanding over your project, go one way or the other way. So tell your story, but stick with the story. I kind of like the idea that most of my details are going this way. So I'm going to sand only in this direction. I wouldn't want to sand this one this way and this one this way. So now we're revealing that color right there, which is what she was asking and I didn't understand. Sorry. Um, so that's got some gray showing through. If you like that look, stick with it. If you do not like that look, then what you would do is you would reposition your stencil because stencils are repositionable. And then you would go back over with your white and you might give it a little light sanding right there so that it's a little bit um, more white than it is gray sanded through. It depends on the level of distress that you're gonna want. So it's a really, really good observation and question. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. We're so lucky we work together. Okay, so we're gonna go here and we're going to do take care of this tree. So I've got my tree and he's on the lines of the dark, but I already have the drop shadow done. And so I'm gonna go find my drop shadow because I don't wanna do three coats of paint on my green tree or on my tree. So I'm gonna line it up to the drop shadow color and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do black, which I lost for a second. You guys, these are the honey bottles. Um, I wanted to talk about paint for a hot second. I think about this stuff when I'm at home. Um, these are honey bottles and the paint inside is the Sherwin-Williams paint and we have the color chip um, product on our website that you can um, compare or compare them to the paints you already have in your craft room. There is no need to buy 800 bottles of paint in different brands. That's not what I'm promoting. Um, but the DecoArt is the smaller two ounce bottles and that is some kick butt paint. Um, and definitely if I was not painting 150 signs, I painted with DecoArt colors for probably about 20 years. So it's brilliant. I've never had a problem with it. So. That's what's in our bottles, but DecoArt is the one that you would probably choose if you were at home with your paint. So I'm going to go into the tree and I'm going to paint it black. And we've had a couple of questions today about what is the specific paint we use from Sherwin-Williams. Mm -hmm. ah. um, if you, I cannot post a picture during a live chat, but if you yeah. want to send us a message on our Studio R12, Facebook page, I can send you a photo of the containers that we get from them and it will have all the information that you need on it. Yeah, and it, it's basically it's house paint. Um, and honestly, way back when I lived in Oregon and I was, I think I was just maybe teaching, I don't think I was designing yet, but um, I was just teaching painting workshops. I think I was still selling at bazaars and stuff like that. Um, I went to a shop I think Julie, and I can't think of her last name, in, um, and I can't think of the town. It's way there on the coast. Anyway, um, went to her shop and taught, and she was using giant cans of, like, house paint. And I was like, what? You can use house paint? So it, like, blew my hippie noodle. And, um, and yeah, so house paint can be used. 
You've seen me richen up the color on some of the projects on our YouTube channel, so make sure you go and subscribe and do the thing. But um, you can richen them up because they use a lot of filler in, in all the craft paints and in the house paints. And the filler makes it chalkier and not quite so rich. And so we've used a deco art product that you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna know about because you can use that to richen up your colors. Um, we got rid of our little guys. Ah. So case in point, um, here on this video on YouTube. This color that is around the edges of the eyes and the smiles and stuff like this, magical, right? It's so rich and so deep and so amazing. You can't get that out of a bottle. So you have to use the other kind of paint, which is a fillerless paint. And Decor sells an amazing set. And you just use drops at a time. So it's actually really affordable. It's not all Decor paint, just the media. It's just the media acrylics, yeah. But you want to check this video out to see how we do that, okay? Deco art paint has less filler. Uh, media acrylics have no filler. Yeah, deco. No, well, deco art. I don't know if they have less or more than house paint, um, but they all craft paints and all house paints have filler. So because you, if you can't cover, so the media acrylics that we're talking about there, which is a line of paints in the craft world, um, will glaze your color without covering your color. So um, it will net, they will never base coat. And that's why these little bottles are that big, but you use drops at a time. You do not use quarters and half dollars and, and like that kind of thing. You use drops and it goes so far, but it will never, ever, ever base coat. So don't even try, you're not gonna get there. Okay, back to our subject. We are going to move this back to our original position. So I use the other letters that I already did and then I'm going to make a bright green Christmas tree. And I might even stipple some snow on him. I think I might. Um, completely out of brushes over here. Does somebody want to go grab me a handful of brushes? Oh, I got one. I got one. I got two. I'm good. Whew. We have um, buckets and buckets and buckets and buckets of brushes, but um, they were drying. Okay, so we're gonna go here, we're gonna stipple, and I chose a green that's a little bit brighter than the green that is in our background. And we'll see what that looks like, we'll peek. How many of you guys are peekers? And make sure you are asking questions because this whole lesson is in response to a question that somebody asked. So um, make sure if you're a stencil fan and you have questions, we want to answer the questions for you. That is our job. Thanks for doing your job. <laughs> Thanks for doing your job. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do a second coat and I'm stippling. Notice I am stippling. Um, stippling will cover better than swirling. And some sometimes if you have a light color going over, and this is actually a kind of so let's talk about fillers again. Okay, so this color is a green that is a saturated color, meaning it is bold and crazy bright, right? This one has got a white cast to it. This has got white filler paint and it is mixed with white to take its value down to, or up to white, and but it's got a lot of filler stuff in it. This one doesn't have as much because it's vibrant. If a color is vibrant, not so much filler. So if I put this color over black, then it's gonna take me like five base coats to get it filled in. So what I'll do is I'll stipple instead because stippling will cover faster. Phew, so many words. I've used up my quota today, you're welcome. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> okay, and I do have a couple of um, furs or hairs stuck in my fur tree there. We're gonna peek, we're gonna peek right under here. I'm gonna hold my hand here so it doesn't shift and do a shimmy on me. And, ooh, that looks so cool with the black under there. That's neat. So now what I wanna do is I think I wanna go ahead and add some snow. Now my snow is going to, um, this is 
really not a designed project. I wouldn't snow on this and then not snow on other elements. So I'm not taking this across the finish line, but with your stencil in place, you can take a little stencil brush and you can take your and smash it open. Just kill that brush. Look at that gnarliness. That's so good. <laughs> I brought on my Halloween voice just then. Okay, and then I can take my snow and I can just stipple it across my tree. And then I can go back and get some crunchies. And then some more crunchies and then just touch them. So I built a plate of stippled snow and then I put some spaghetti <laughs> on the plate. But it didn't take up the whole plate and then I'm putting sauce on top. So each level of saturation with the white is giving you a more solid effect. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. And we have a snowy tree. How fun. All right, you guys, I hope that that takes some of the craziness and I actually hope it introduces some of the possibility of doing sure. drop shadow, drop shadow up, drop shadow down, over, oh, under, on big, everything. little, everything. It just makes your project even better, mm -hmm. bigger, and more. So, right. yeah. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you on Tuesday. With our fun background. With our 22nd background. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's going to be yeah. a short one next week. <laughs> We're going to be, yeah, sure. <laughs> if she stops talking. <laughs> All right. See you guys. See you guys. Thank you.